Hey guys, my name's Connor. Uh, we also got uh, Tony here as well. Uh, another episode of On the Podium. It's been a while since we've, uh, you know, put out some content for you guys. Uh, we're just, you know, like everyone else, uh, trying to adjust to working from home right now. Uh, we do promise, you know, we'll be getting you guys uh, some more content out there um, as soon as possible. Uh, but also wanted to introduce, we've got Mark Vives on the line as well with us. So really appreciate, you know, him being able to hop on. Uh, he's from New Breed Training Center out of Illinois. So uh, Mark, you just say hi real quick to everybody. What's up, guys? How are you? How's everyone doing? Good. And then uh, I'll pass it off to Anthony uh, real quick. Yeah. Um, as everybody's aware uh, with this coronavirus stuff going on, it's affecting everybody uh, to the point where, you know, we're all working from home. Some of us, unfortunately, are, are laid off and everything. Um, but, you know, in part of our mission here at KickSight is uh, just to kind of remind people of things that they can be doing. Um, as gym owners, um, which is why we brought on the marvelous Mark Vives, uh, because not only is he a gym owner, but he's also kind of in the same situation Connor and I are in, uh, in the fact that we train, we love doing jujitsu, we love competing and everything, and we're at a standstill. Um, but there's a lot of people that will uh, watch that just don't know who you are, Mark. So uh, if you could give us like a two, three minute biography about yourself. Uh, maybe how long you've been a gym owner, fun fact or two, uh, just something to, you know, uh, give everybody an idea of who you are. No problem. Um, so my name is Mark Vives from New Breed Training Center, also a part of a tag team. Uh, tag team's run under Jared Weiner, and uh, he's a longtime friend. And I have been doing jiu-jitsu now for 22 years. I've been a gym owner for a little over 15 years. Uh, the gym in Chicago, New Breed Training Center, was actually started by one, of, uh, by one of my brothers, my younger brother. I'm actually one of three black belts in the, the Vivez family, so to speak. So I'm the, I was the last one to get it. Uh, but still, I'm the only one still, still active and competing. Uh, still kicking, still kicking, still got it in me. But um, yeah, so I've been running the school now for 15 years. We've grown to be one of the larger teams in the Chicagoland area, if not the Midwest. Um, big strong presence and you know and we have a lot of competitors we it's our school honestly i would say probably about 15 to 25 about 20 percent of our member base actually competes so we have a very competitive school um but all over the midwest as well too uh, lots of different affiliates in ohio iowa uh even in wisconsin and all across the midwest and east coast as well too internationally actually but um yeah so that's basically it i mean really stuck here at home with the kids driving me crazy but uh, driving everybody crazy who has kids but um you know i try to make do with what we can while we while we have the opportunity yeah right everyone's sure. getting a little case of the cabin fever for sure <laughs> absolutely uh, well mark we'll uh we'll go ahead and kind of jump right into some of the questions that we have here for you um i know uh it's a little different everywhere you know, you go on the news, you know, every every state kind of has their own things that's going on. Here in Kansas, we're, we're working from home, me and Anthony are, um, and, and most essential businesses kind of had to close here. Um, but what's the situation like up in Illinois, like right now? Are you guys uh, kind of in some sort of mandated shutdown? You guys, is it just essential workers, that, that, that type of thing? Yes, we are in a shelter and home. Uh, we currently have a shelter and home order. The order has been effective now for little less than a week uh but for the most part when they basically came out i believe that was on the 14th when they uh march 14th when they pretty much sat there and went on the news and started uh when the president sat there and started suggesting that um there should be no gatherings of any type of uh te of 10 or more people that's pretty much when the whole chicagoland area kind of started really shutting down so to speak and the official world uh, where the official sh shelter in home order came out uh i believe i went into effect on the 21st in the afternoon so that's kind of where we're at right now that order's supposed to be effective through april 7th so allegedly allegedly we're going to be able to go back to work and open up gyms and businesses and such on april 8th but right now it's just essential essential personnel that are able to go to work and carry on as business as normal uh, thankfully i'm allowed to go to the gym to make sure it's clean uh you know basic maintenance stuff and everything else but other than that i'd be stuck at home like everybody else but uh, yeah that's the only solace i have just go there every couple of days 
at least yeah at least you can get out of the house but yeah fingers crossed this is all over um like you said april 8th is kind of your guys's mark for return so yeah hopefully everyone's able to get back to you know what what normal it will be after this is all over um, yeah definitely looking looking for that uh here soon um but yeah i also wanted to ask with with you know a lot of people in a very similar situation that you're in and and like we're in you know having to stay in um do you have advice for um you know maybe a gym owner you know that has parents or students coming to them and saying hey uh, i you know obviously can't come to your gym i need to you know freeze my account or maybe they just need to cancel altogether you know understandably so with you know people having to you know cut and save their own expenses uh what advice do you have to a gym owner that's just you know getting a lot of that from from parents and students yeah, thankfully i haven't had that much of it to be honest with you and i'm very blessed uh, uh at least on my side to have a good member base that is 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 willing to at least stick with me for the short of the short time uh for at least a month i think everyone understands that this is something that we all have to go through and um you know it's it's just something that you know, we're, we're just trying to hold on for as long as we can before we have to make drastic, uh, dare I say, drastic decisions. Um, so with that, that being said, I've had cancellations. I haven't had, I projected a lot more, and, you know, thankfully I haven't had too many, but um, to those individuals who messaged me and canceled me again, a lot, like you mentioned earlier, a lot of people have been laid off. A lot of people are going through a lot of hardship. I had one family, a family of five actually, um, have to suspend their membership the other day, and that's mainly because their 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 livelihoods at stake. They have to di divert all their energy and all their resources to that. And you know, to those individuals, uh, to the gym owners, you know, talk with them, be sympathetic to your members, and absolutely cancel or do something for them. Where you know, like absolutely cancel it for them and stuff. I know it's I know it's it's hard, but at the same time. You have to do it. It's like you have to understand. Like I understand that, uh, you know, for 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 some people who aren't competitors and everything else, this is this is just their outlet. And if if it's something that they have to kind of cut into their, you know, if if, if jujitsu for them is something that might cut into their ability to make a living and ability to sit there and put food on the table, by all means. Well, what I've done is I've canceled uh, those individual memberships, especially the ones with hardships, and I flat out told them, I'm like, look. You know, I'm, a, I'm hoping we're open on April 8th. And if we are, come back to the gym. Come back to the gym. Take a month on me. You know, let's not even talk about that. Not even going to talk about billing with you until, until May. I just want you comfortable. I want you in a stress-free environment as much as humanly possible. I want you to go back to your normal, what, what that was before all this went down, before the lockdown went down. So that's what I've said to those members. You know, I encourage all the school, school owners to, you know, even keep a good rapport with those individuals too that have to cancel. I, I shoot out messages to all these individuals all the time. And, um, you know, I just try to sit there and keep them engaged as much as possible. I'm fortunate enough to have the video online library, uh, video online library that I set up through Kicksite, and I've tried to keep them on. Uh, I've tried to still retain their access for that as well too. I hope I did it right, but I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> but, but I've tried to sit there and you know at least still keep them engaged in that manner. So I'm fortunate to have that to at least offer them and say like you know, hey, we're here. You know, I hope everything clears up for you guys. Uh, you know, and when it does. This is home. This is a second home for you. So please come back. Awesome. For sure, it's good advice, <clears throat> especially for those that um, you know have a have a large student base to work with. You know, and you've got all that loyalty there, and those guys they understand that the the longer that they keep that membership open with you, even if they're kind of going through hard times, it's you know allowing you an opportunity uh, to continue to train them in the future. So that's a, another way of you know some of you know, my teammates looked at it. It's like, Hey, you know, we're going to continue to pay if this is only going on for a month because we want a place to train when everything comes back. So good stuff. Right. And then I also even sat there and went on to tell um, my membership base that say like, and I was just very frank with them. I'm like, look, I know this is a very difficult time for all of us and I'm not going to ask you guys to stop paying your dues. I want to let you know that I completely uh, appreciate your support, your patronage with us, and you've supported me for how many years, and, and, and you know, and if we stick together on this, you know, basically, I've sat there and set up a couple of things. I put a lot of things in motion right now where, you know, when this is all said and done, I'm having a member appreciation day for them, and I'm flying in somewhere, I'm flying in a multiple time Abu Dhabi champion, world champion in for a completely free seminar. I'm just 
basically sitting there and just, you know, going to front all the money for that. And not some people want to donate too, but just essentially fr front the bulk of it and just, you know, have that as a member appreciation uh, day, uh, thing, uh, seminar, if you will, a gift to them. Uh, you know, I just want to sit there and show my, 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 my appreciation for their undying support, awesome. unconditional support. Yeah, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so if we kind of look at things or put ourselves like maybe when we first got started, um, you know, if you had just established a gym, which, you know, uh, in our line of work, we work with gyms of all sizes, you know, right. guys that are just getting started. Uh, we get the fortunate luck of working with them to help them build their business from the ground up. What, what do you think smaller business owners can do in this time? I think the first thing, and we've all, we've, we've done this too. The first thing you need to do is, is contact. I mean, if you're a small business owner and you're a brand new gym starting out, uh, you're definitely renting space. So contact your landlord, contact the person that you're paying monthly rent to and, uh, you know, explain to them, just be outright upfront and honest, just like, look, I'm going like I, if I have the means to continue paying you rent and everything else, I will. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, if my students aren't training, they're not going to be able to sit now they, they may have a hard time paying dues and I may not be able to pay you. So if that's the case, I'm not trying to get out of paying rent, but can, would you take a reduced amount and I'll make it up on the back end over the rest of the course of my lease. I know that that's what, that's the way that we've sat there and approached it. Uh, I know that our landlord's actually trying to run the numbers right now. And, and you know, we've been with them for, I think it's going to be, it's over nine years now. So almost 10 years. So they're actually very willing to work with us, at least in our location. Uh, we have a big warehouse space and, you know, a bunch of other warehouses and uh, other, a bunch of other tenants. We're the second longest tenured uh, a tenant there. So they're very willing to kind of, do, you know, bend over, bend over a little bit for us and stuff. So they're supposed to give us an answer soon. Um, you know, do I want it to come down to that? No, I'm a man of my word. You know, if someone gives me a bill, I'm going to pay that bill. But um, for the small business owners, definitely reach out there. Start out right then and there. Uh, it's a, for the most part, I found that individuals who have done that have actually gotten a lot of positive feedback. So that's the first thing. First, like, that's the first thing. I mean, and you know, it's. I've also heard some school owners as well too. Uh, the new school owners as well too say, okay, look, what we're going to do is if everyone can keep paying dues, I don't know exactly how they term it, but this is the way they explained it to me, is they're going to go ahead and keep charging dues. And once everything returns back to normal, they're going to like, a block at a time, maybe 20, this like the first 25% uh, of their member base is going to be spotted this month. They're going to be basically have a free month, say in June, mm -hmm. next 25% free month in July, next 25% free month in August, next 25% three months in September and then everyone's kind of a wash and stuff like that and made whole. So, I mean, we're going to take some losses as small business owners. Doesn't matter if you just started within the past six months. Doesn't matter if you've been doing this for 15 years, we're all going to take some losses and some lumps on this. And, you know, it's just a matter of trying to sit there and appeal to the human nature of everybody and get them to understand and be like you know, we're compassionate people i think like, like humans in general are compassionate people they understand they just don't want to be messed with they, just, they don't want to be strung along or anything like that I, that's i'm a pretty blunt honest guy when it comes to my member uh, to what i say with my member base sure. so i mean i think they kind of respect that and they understand uh, they understand the situation a lot better because of that good um you mentioned that in your downtime you're um you're allowed to get into your gym and clean and you know prep um, what other things do you think that gym owners could be doing <clears throat> if they have one of these mandatory shelter and homes like we have in Kansas and you do in Illinois? Um, you know, what can gym owners be doing to prepare for when this does blow over and, you know, they can open the doors and they get the flood of everybody back in? Right. What should they be doing? Well, there's a lot of different things. Uh, number one, you are probably going to, I mean, there's two arguments here. You like number one and what we're all hoping for is that influx of students right back into play. Mm -hmm. um, so during this time right now, I think the most important thing is to communicate and engage your member base, uh, engage the community as much as you can, but mo but primarily and most importantly, your current member base. Uh, even the ones that have to suspend their memberships or terminate their memberships for uh, you know, occupational reasons or just want to stay at home because they just, you know, they, they just want to. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like, I think being able to ensure that 
you care about their well-being and also are still provide, try, doing your best to, to communicate with them and provide them as much, as much value as possible. I think that's completely integral. I think another thing that most gym owners need to understand, and this, is, this, this should go without saying, but more than anything else is stay in shape. <laughs> stay in shape, stay, stay active. I mean, if, if the worst thing that could possibly happen is that we all go back, you know, let's just say a couple of weeks from now, and the gym owner head instructor is the person who is in the worst possible shape. And he's trying to teach class. He's trying to participate in class. And he's huffing and puffing. Like, or he or she is huffing and puffing. That would that'd be horrible. I, like, our, our, the way I look at it is as a gym owner, our students are looking at us for some guidance and for, for essentially what amounts to a role model. So right. they want us to you know, stay active. Basically, pre, like, you know, practice what we preach at this point. You know, and, you know, the, it's uh, you know I I hate to say that but like you know it's it goes without saying but some people are going to come in there some gym owners are going to come in there and they're like wow I really like this month long vacation <laughs> no I can't like and they're just going to be on the sidelines just delegating and be like just go do this <laughs> go. okay no but like I, I can see it happening I'm not that type of person I'm still trying to do what I can a home gym setup and everything like that you know, chasing around my kids and, you know, and all that other stuff but. Um, you know, it's that, that, that goes without saying that's undervalued. I think another thing too is, and this is kind of a blessing in disguise. Um, there's a lot of gym owners out there and I, 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 I was one of them and I still am for lack of better terms who, uh, the gym owners, they really just want to get on the mat. Like some of us mm -hmm. like, you know, are, are the worst business people in the world. And some of us just want to get on the mat. And, you know, for me, when I started the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school or when I took it over from my younger brother, uh, I had another job. I had a, I had a well-paying job. And for me, it was just, you know, just trying to find friends to jump on the mat with me and we could beat each other up. Uh, and this gives those individuals like the former me and still kind of me the opportunity to at least review your processes, review your curriculums, make sure you, you can become a better teacher. Watch, like write down what it is that you teach and literally write it down and try to, and as you're writing it down, try to actually basically write out what it is that you're actually like teaching and, and the details and everything else. You can become a better teacher. You don't actually have to be in the gym to be a better teacher, to be a better role model there too. Uh, there's always something for us to work at. And that's, that's one of them, the teaching aspect. I think the, you know, by far the one thing that I've been able to do is really clean up the back end of everything. Uh, like still working on it too. It's just like, there's always something to improve on. And, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's about staying in contact with my staff and making sure that everyone's always on the same page and trying to sit there and improve, you know, the processes that we have in place. Like, for example, like, you know, by the time we're all out of this, so I'm going to have a brand new kids curriculum. Uh, I've, you know, looked at it, basically took it apart and I'm building it back up right now by like, you know, tormenting my children, making them. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you know, that's, there's always something to prove on. And this little, dare I say, month long vacation is a good opportunity for, to hit that soft reboot, if you will, and just move on and come back a better, come back with a better, better product, better training environment. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Cool. Definitely a, uh, a positive outlook on, on the situation. And, and I think a lot of people could kind of use that, that positive outlook on, you know, how to, you know, use this time, you know, wisely and what to do with it. And I know you had mentioned, um, you know, not every instructor does it, but, you know, you, you definitely encourage every instructor, you know, stay in shape and make sure that they're staying healthy. Um, how would you recommend uh, your students, you know, still get that practice at home? And, you know, as you can imagine, a lot of your students probably don't have, you know, dumbbells and weights or a mat to train with, or maybe even a partner to train with. So how does, you know, a student that is maybe kind of on their own in that situation, um, how do they still kind of get that training and, and stay prepared, you know, to come back on the mats, you know, hopefully in a month, if not longer? Right. I, the most important thing is uh, about this is the mental aspect. But, uh, you know, but talking about the physical aspect first, uh, for me, it's just as simple as uh, one of my black belts, uh, Danny Medell, put it this way. He he sat there and said, worst case scenario, if you just want to work out, just pick up the heaviest thing you can find and walk until you can't walk anymore and can't hold it. Then take a breather, do it again, take a breather, do it again, take a breather, do it again, do it five times, and then realize that you've got to pick it back up and walk all the way back home. with it. 
<laughs> I mean, for me, it honestly, sometimes just you know, getting exercise and you know, it, getting exercise is just as simple as that. It's literally just pick up the heaviest thing you can and do work with it. Uh, so, I mean, and anyone can do that. Anyone can load up a backpack or, or just a duffel or something like that with whatever they can find. You know, with the jujitsu guys, we have enough keys. I mean, I don't know if you can see it back behind me, but I've got a whole <laughs> bunch of keys. I've got about 40 keys on the bottom here. Yeah. One weighs, what, three pounds, three, three and a half pounds, something okay. like that. Yeah, just shove it all into a duffel and get, you know, and start walking that away <laughs> until you can't anymore. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just as simple as that. I mean, if you live in a high rise, you don't have the ability to walk, you know, along safe, high, safe roads and such. Um, and if you're on a high rise, just – walk some stairs that's the bare minimum that'll just honestly you're talking about five to 20 minutes a day of just putting in work and hopefully multiple times within a day twice a day is more than enough to stimulate your cardiovascular system more than enough to stimulate your immune system and more than enough to just kind of just you know basically get the endorphins going and get you through it which really help when it comes to the mental aspect of things more than anything and this is well, this is the competitor in me uh, more than anything else, it's about trying to stay mentally strong and stay, stay the course, if you will, stay, 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 get, stay on that path. Um, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu specifically, it's, it's become a worldwide sport now. It's a huge phenomenon. It's a, it's a social sport, uh, but it's a combat sport, whatever you want to call it. But let's not forget there is a martial art aspect to this as well, too. There is, there is a, 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 a a, a um, concept of discipline and a concept of, you know, well, specifically discipline and just the right, having the right mindset to just keep on going. And, you know, the best people and, and the best people in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the best people in our sport have that, just keep, have that just drive and that dedication and that perseverance, uh, the ability to, to weather the storm, the ability to walk into the gym and get murdered by everyone for like a month because they're trying something new and be able to just kind of bounce back and keep on going and persevering. That consistency is what we need the most right now. Um, if you can mentally stay strong and stay focused, you're going to get through this just fine. I think that's the most important part. And people need to at least wake up and take a few minutes and just honestly, just call it self-reflection, call, call it, call it uh, meditation, if you will. And just basically say to yourself, just like, yeah, it stinks that I'm not going to be able to get the train. But same time, I'm going to do everything that I can to mentally prepare myself for what's going to happen. I mean, we've all been. I, I, I Connor, I know that you're relatively new to the jujitsu game, and uh, like Tony, I know you've been training a while. But I've had, I've had extended periods of time where I can't train, and you know, I've I've gone through four years of like basic uh, three and a half, four years of training on and off, and, and being extremely inconsistent. And you know, that being said it was really hard to kind of come back, but it, all it took for me was just literally a decision. Well, a decision the night before saying, when I wake up tomorrow, it's going to stink, but I'm going to sit there and drive all the way up and uh, drive all the way up, get that first morning class in. And I'm going to do it again and again and again and again and again. And that was back in May of 03 after I took that break. And I had basically been training five to six days a week since then so i mean like you know it's it's that type of drive and mindset that's going to help you through the current situation that's what i feel and you know like you know like to my students you know just understand that you know we don't ever want to stop doing this and if we stop now is to you know if we stop now when we finally feel feel that we're you know, back to you know back when we finally feel we have the opportunity to come back again it's going to be that much harder we're creatures of habit. So get out there, grab a pillow, beat it up, grab a stuffed toy, go beat it up, go take your duffel, shove as many geese as you can in there, some rocks, whatever, concrete, and get walking. And um, just stay active, even just a little bit. So that's my advice to my students and anyone who's still training and can't get them that. Awesome. For sure, we can't sit around for a month dormant. Otherwise, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a rough first uh, First time on the mat when we all get back. Um, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, need it's going to be a real first time for everyone. So we're all kind of <laughs> sort of on the level playing field, except for me. I'm getting, I'm staying pretty active. <laughs> all those guys that are skipping warm-ups, all they get are warm-ups when they come back. Oh, yeah. That's 100%. All, all class. That's all it is. Oh, yeah. That's all it's going to be. 
That's all it is. That's literally all it is. Because they're not going to want to spar when it comes time to training. They're yeah. like, good. I'm tired, man. I'm going home. Yeah. I think I, uh, I kind of rolled my ankle during quarantine. So, <laughs> so. Um, but uh, no, you I mean, you, you definitely brought up a good point. I mean, you definitely got to find ways, whether it's a lack of equipment, whatever the excuse is, there's always a way to, to find the, you know, to find something to work out with or to find a way to, you know, stay fit during these times. Um, is there anything that you get, you guys as gym, gym owners and instructors, um, you know, are doing to just be a resource uh, during these times? And is there any tools that you guys are using or currently use uh, to, to provide resources or to, to provide, you know, some sort of, um, you know, training for your students? I know a lot of I know a lot of gym owners are trying to do the uh, the the virtual classes, if you will, and I know it's very tough. And so for me, I'm kind of going somewhat of a different route, so to speak. I know a lot of my students are personally are uh, I know I know a lot of my students at Newbie Training Center. They they tend, they're very active individuals. They know how to stay active. They like they're they're relatively outdoorsy. They like to go for walks. They like to go for bike rides and so forth and so on. So I don't have to worry too much about them staying active. But for me, it's about making sure that I stay in touch with them and communicate with them. That's priority number one. And also give them a resource to, uh, to basically look at jujitsu. So what I've been able to do is I've looked up uh, like I've ramped up uh, my. Uh, I've wrapped up our KickSite uh, video online library and I'm adding content. I'm adding probably on the average 10 positions a day, just constantly recording. Uh, the great thing about it is that I have a 20 year old daughter and uh, my 20 and I have a 20 and 13 year old daughter and I'm in quarantine with them because they're family and related. Mm -hmm. So I can drag them along with me to the gym, <laughs> make them clean it and then record me beating them up a little bit. And then I'm not playing it out of the kick site. But um, so I've been fortunate that I at least have, uh, you know, an, uh, you know, a, someone who can feed me a little bit and feed me some drills and everything like that and actually be able to upload that online. Uh, it, and it's not everyone's in that, not everyone's in that situation, but for me, that's, you know, providing them that content, providing them that resource. And there's so many questions that all my students have that they keep messaging me about, texting me like, hey, can you record this position? Can you record this position? I'm getting to it. I promise <laughs> I'm getting to it. One of the other things too, at least for uh, my students, that perhaps we don't train enough, uh, specifically in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is the mental aspect of it all. Uh, the specific competitive mental aspect of it all and situational aspect of it all. So what I've started doing in KickSite is I've uploaded match breakdowns. Now, uh, you know, I've, I have a lot of my own matches and I don't want to just put a, basically put up all my matches on there too. So I've asked for some of my students to, you know, to let me break down their matches, matches where they've won, matches where they've lost and kind of go through different, like, you know, basically this is what you could have done better, the areas of improvement, so forth and so on didn't necessarily need to do A, B, and C when all you really need to do was X, Y, and Z. And that probably would have, you know, turned out you know, a little bit better or so forth and so on. I think uh, for me, a lot of mental reps and mental practice uh, really kind of gets that fire going. <laughs> you know, that people don't really get, if I can at least stimulate their minds, uh, they're not, they don't care how bad they look like <laughs> how bad, when they come, when they get back on the mats they'll they'll be okay they're like they're they're a really competitive bunch a group of a group of students i think we'll be all right but yeah, for me it's just you know trying to use tools like kicksite uh, i've basically downloaded every conceivable app on my phone to make clips video clips and everything like that you know just parsing through which ones work uh, of course, using social media, Instagram and Facebook as much as humanly possible. I don't want to overdo it too much on, so, on social media because it seems like everyone's trying to overdo it on social media. Sure. So I'm basically trying to take care of the in-house perspective more uh, as opposed to reaching out to a broader audience per se. I think it's more important. It's just like, you know, especially the, for my students at Newbury Training Center, uh, you know, I have to take care of them. I mean, I have to take care of them. I want to take care of everyone else too, but I have to take care of those students first. Gotcha. Well, um, I know that we are running out of time here. You're a super busy guy. Uh, so first and foremost, thanks so much for joining in. Thank you. Uh, this is the first time we've had a guest. So this oh, went wow. really, really well. And uh, we, we chose you for a number of reasons. Um, but let me just kind of recap some of the advice that you're giving like from the top. 
um, you know, gym owners, just work with your students. You know, it sounds like um, students, if you can pay your dues, you know, you're going to have a place to come back to, obviously. Um, you know, communication, I heard a lot, right? Just constantly staying uh, relevant with your students. You know, they're not, everybody nowadays seems to have a very short attention span. <clears throat> so even though this is only 30 days and in the grand scheme, anybody over 30 years old knows that like a month goes by like that. So we'll be back before we know it, but staying in communication, very, very important. And then of course, it sounds like leveraging tools to keep people engaged. If you are a gym owner with a video repository uh, or a video library where you're uploading on a regular basis. So all good information. Um, as always, you know, we want to provide value for everybody. Since we do have another minute or two, I did want to play uh, a quick game of six degrees of separation. Um, okay. Anybody that doesn't know much about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, if you're watching, um, I've only been training for about nine, coming up on 10 years now, uh, less than half the time that Mark has, but we're connected in a number of ways. And it actually goes back way before the kick site days. So in, I, did, I did my research, so okay. I'm true on all of these facts here. In 2014, um, I was a blue belt, and I trained in Kansas City, which is not that far from Chicago. That's too bad. The IBJJF has you know, multiple Chicago Opens every year. We went to the one in late August. Um, okay. My instructor actually fought you in an absolute division. Uh, his name's Jason Bircher. I don't know if you remember him or not. I do. Okay. I like, I like Jason. <laughs> Jason's a cool guy. And then um, I've actually had matches against two guys – from one, I think from directly from your gym, uh, Aaron Carbonell. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, met him in the finals. Uh, that was the first time I ever won a gold medal at an IBJJF tournament. Glad uh, you beat him. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to approach that situation. It's okay. Okay. No I, problem. <laughs> and then the second guy, and he's tough as nails, I think is a black belt now, Jace Vevera. Oh, first, yeah. He's tough. Yeah, the first time I got to talk or uh, uh, match up with him was at Subspectrum about this same time last year. Okay. He beat the brakes off of me super quick. He's good. And then uh, we met up again at, at a Chicago Open uh, a couple of months later, the one in mm -hmm. May where they messed up the schedule real bad. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, got to, I got to fight him again there. Didn't have the, had the same outcome. Uh, <laughs> he bested me, but uh, he's really, really good. He's so. really good. He's yeah. really, really good. He's improved, like, beyond, beyond. But I do love Jason. I got to say I love Jason. Fun, <laughs> funny thing about that match is funny because, like, you know, we've, we've, we've competed against each other before. You know, we're friends and everything like that. Yeah. And it was funny because uh, we were in the bullpen. I was just like, hey, 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 don't you dare throw up a flying triangle on me, right? We're not doing that. We're not doing that, right? We're not doing that. So we're just joking and laughing. And actually, uh, yeah, it was, it was something like that. And Oh, I, and it was funny because, like, right before the match, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try flying triangle you, okay? And then we just started laughing and everything like that. And sure enough, in the match, I was just like, wait a second. He's actually giving me a flying triangle. So I actually <laughs> jumped it. Uh, I didn't end up finishing it, but I jumped it. And I, you know, closed the triangle. And it was funny because there's a couple pictures that are out there and stuff like that. Because right after I hit the triangle, we hit the ground. And I looked at him and was just like, told you. And we just started laughing. We just literally, we're in the middle of the match. We just started laughing. There's a whole bunch of pictures of us just laughing right there and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Good times. And so, like I said, anybody that doesn't know much about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that's how tight knit the community is as large as it is guys that are from seemingly completely different walks of life were, were connected just because of this. And it's, it's, it's so cool. So um, before we let, you know, uh, before we end it all, anything you, anything else you want to say, anything you want to plug, uh, for anybody watching? Uh, yeah, I just want to say number one, first and foremost, thanks guys for having me on. It's a pleasure. It's always fun to sit there and talk to, uh, talk to jitsu. Uh, I do it all the time, but, uh, you know, I have a ton of ramble as well too, as you guys can probably tell, but, um, I love doing it. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Kicksite, for everything that you've done for me and in the New Breed Training Center and the rest of the other schools that I know that are affiliated with New Breed, Ch New Breed Training Center uh, that also are under, uh, that also use Kicksite as well, too. I mean, it's a wonderful product. I think everyone should like take the time to look into it and, and see how it can benefit them. Um, also, want to give a quick shout out to uh, some of my sponsors, BGATs. Combat Corner Professional, Combat Corner Kimonos, uh, also Health Kick Chicago, which is a, a local uh, Health Kick Chicago, which is a local uh, supplement store around here. Um, 
my strength programming guys, uh, 50 Barbell on, Insta on Instagram, Jack Cambria, uh, Applied Strength and Conditioning, uh, that's Jason Gussick out in Indiana, uh, Donnie Thompson, all my body tempering guys, Sam Spiegelman, he's my uh, muscle activation therapy guy and body tempering guy. Uh, of course, Olin Krutz, who, uh, former Chicago Bear and everything like that, but uh, he lets me work out at his gym, you know, before and after this. And, uh, you know, of, co of course, like watches over me and make sure that I lift up the big weights <laughs> as much as I can. But, um, you know, of course, Zydman Associates, they always help me out. And, and you know, there's a whole bunch of other people, but uh, I'm sure that they know that I love them all. But like, you know, but thanks again, guys, for having me. Always a pleasure. Awesome. Take care, man. Take Short care. ends, yeah. Take care, Mark. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks, Connor. Thanks for everything. Yep. Bye-bye.